man. Yeah. The first publicly long official time in the making. Halo Wars 2 tournament series of all time. Here we are. All the way down to this. Months of grinding. Very quickly, let me just say uh, thanks to Hosty and our mod team. Especially Gabe. All the support they've put through. Uh, Gabe as well. Let's, let's also say thank you to Banished. Thank you to Team Respawn. Thank you to 343 Cake Pop, including Scooty, Renzi, Post. We're here. Let's go. On the red side, ladies and gentlemen, representing <gasps> UNSC's Forge, who's back from the dead, Almirante99 from Mexico. And on the blue side, Frontier's best banished leader, in most opinions, Mike Beaston, playing in the blue as Colin Harvester Evan. Constructed. Harvester Constructed, Nick. Who, you got, <laughs> Who do you got game one? Game one, my money is on Mike Beaston. Mike Beaston's going to 4-0 Almirante in this first series. <laughs> I'm confident as I hell I like right the now. colony advantage here. Absolutely. If Mike gets the two mini bases in the complete. center. Absolutely true. You see both players... That's my only contingency there. Absolutely aggressive in the middle of the map. Trying to get that control very early on. Almirante steals that mini base. Very so he pretty. wants it ASAP. Mike needs to make sure that he doesn't lose his other middle mini to this same kind of aggression as the Marines reach their way across the other side of the middle of the map. Harvester Nick, what's the best play as UNSC to, against the, uh, the Hunter Captain from Colony? So we've talked about this before, right? I'd like to see... So, you can't necessarily ram units with... Uh, with UNSC and Colony, mini so... Base, ready to use. I don't know, I, I want to see the fight in the center of the map. Don't let Mike... Uh, get to Army's Harvester front door with that hunter captain. You need to put the fight out to the side because as soon as he pushes, he's gonna have that Goliath drop. It's gonna get nasty very quickly. Keep it in the center of the map. Make a good concave around that hunter's captain. And force him to use the taunt. And force boom, the taunt. Man. You get the Marines <laughs> to finish it off, and that's it. You know, that's 100%. I agree with you there. I think if Forge were also to opt in for multiple snipers War in the early game. Then you've got a very good beginning army composition going barracks fifth, getting some units out snipers wise. You want at least three or four to deal with the hunter captain. Base As complete. he gets a skitter attached to him or two, his health bar is going to skyrocket, have a better Any DPS range complete. as well, and uh, just overall be a complete menace. So Mike Beaston is very good at building the timing for this. His hunter captain's going to come out, the taunt upgrade's going to come out right as he gets the money for him, and then he's going to push out across Our the base. map. Very quickly with Goliath, Suicide, Grunts, Grunts, and Choppers at the same time just to get that early aggression. Yeah. We're seeing... <laughs> is that Forge Hawk 15 seconds out for Clear Almy? Point. Where Burn. is... We have a, There's a War Council. Two seconds out, Hunter Captain out. Gonna start roaming the field here. Now, one thing I will also say is that all hero units versus uh, the Hunter Captain from Colony are pretty much useless in a lot Forge of situations. Anvil round Mini Forge Hog is good, but there is no way that it can contend with the super Marines high DPS and range assault. of the Hunter Captain. Even though the Hunter Captain no, is like the Hunter slowest... Captain's got the big advantage. <laughs> he might be like the slowest unit in the game. <laughs> Despite, like, I honestly think Kodiaks could outspeed him. But I will say that uh, even though he's the slowest, <laughs> His Supply DPS and his upgrade. health are Complete. so strong in the first five minutes of the game, and that's Anvil where all the upgrade. action, the first Complete. six minutes of the game, that's where all the action happens right there. So, four charge rolling We're out. We're going to see the action the right here in the center of the map. Here we go. <laughs> Two big boys are going to be seeing each other. Look at the just shield just rinsed. Do you see that, man? Hunter Captain says, okay. Since that get shield drops, that, that four charge is super weak. Yeah, also from the same time. Good anvil round on the Suiza. Yeah, Suicide Grunts aren't going to be able to do much anyway with some good splits from Almirante, so that's totally fine. Pay attention to the range from the Hunter Captain here. Like, he can't keep up, but you know what? He can certainly snipe you from 10 miles across the map, as we were talking about. Second Skitter now attached reminds as well. me of the well. Locust from Season 1. Oh, absolutely true. Just hits from everywhere on the map, or any place on the map. Uh, and just having a field day here with these Marines. And that Forge Hall, Almy can't do anything here. He's got to run. Yeah, he absolutely does. Has Sniper to is in up. the back of the, of the pack. Mike Beeson coming out swinging here in the first game of potentially 14, I guess you could say. Coming out of the loser's bracket. 14. Hungry. <laughs> Hungry for a W. Does Our not want to get exactly what you like to see. Exactly that. Keep that Hunter forge Captain. way pinned back in the back of the map. Exactly that. Picking off units here and now getting aggressive on the middle mini. You know, if you can't push up to the main base just yet, 
Take what you can, the low-hanging fruit, the mini-base here in the middle of the map as it falls down. Almirante is going to be losing production and income from the supply pad and mini-base marine production that he does have at his fingertips right now. Here we go, Forchog now rolling out as he is getting closer. With snipers now in two, in range of the Hunter Captain, actually going for the Our Goliath first. Oh, suicide runs are good, killer. he just piled them all together. Oh, fantastic connection there. Goliath now will get picked here with up. some good micro. Three snipers now rolling out for Almirante to deal with the Hunter Captain. This is actually very bad for Mike Bison as he gets more aggressive. Oh no, the, the snipers are oh, overcommitting! No, three the snipers, snipers are, are just... overcommitting! Oh no, yep, the Goliath. Goliath does get a ram that. on one. The Hunter Captain is shooting another from 10 years away. Skinner is now attached yeah, to Grunts doing two. some great DPS. Engineer oh Swarm on this concave right here. Doing a great job picking off some of these Marines. The slow from the Hunter Captain right now is also doing so much work on these Marines. Just every little kill counts in the situation. Of course, at the same time, Leader Point, Leader Leader Point Pat. He's going to get the Goliath drop here. Yes, and it's perfect timing too. Suicide Grunts now rallying the middle of the map from the raid camp in the center of the mini base for Mike Beast on as well. All these units having turret, a pile up in the back. Turret comes up as well, having anti-infantry turret here would be absolutely fantastic. Notice that the Suicide Grunt is linking up with the army here, trying to get the connection. Goliath gets the ram down as well. Second turret queued up as well for Amarante. Great little connection there from the anvil round. And that Suicide Grunt is gonna get focus fired by that Forge Hog and be completely useless, Nick. I don't necessarily think that Mike can actually win this engagement, just home field advantage here for Forge, but definitely needs to start picking up those mini bases. Did he not take, he didn't kill the mini base in the center of the map. Almirante still has that with supply pad on. Absolutely, taunt goes down right, as well. Oh no, the scatter bomb oh will drop as well, forcing the units out. Perfect split there from Mike. Only one unit so caught. The Forge Hog's one bullet, Forge Hog will go down. Forge Hog on. The sniper is all did drop that's in. They were doing some damage. That's it, Hunter Captain now has free reign to shred some units. As you said though, Nick, the turrets in the back are going to be the biggest problem for Almirante. Almirante not upgrading into anti-infantry at the moment. This is going to be very bad for Almirante if he's not able to stop these Goliaths from walking through everything. Almirante has no units! Getting the sign that says, train some more! Goliath now hitting the front of the base as well. Barracks now taking some DPS at the same time. Hunter Captain play, man. Just too good against Almirante in the early game. I'm not sure Almirante can come back Sound from this off, in such great. a tough position. 40 to 12. It's, is it too early to say that this one is in the books? Nick, I think it's not okay, early at all attack. because there's the resign from Almirante. <laughs> That's the resign. And Mike Feast uh, takes game one. I'm telling you, man, the first of a 4-0 sweep in series one. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh my god. Here Did we the go. Kinsano ban be the key oh, to here just. Here we go. He opts for Cutter again. Cutter, his favorite UNSC leader, it seems like. He loves to go Cutter. On this map, especially. Mm -hmm. Especially. Just the, the speed in which your uh, starting Marines and infantry balls can be running just with that raid upgrade makes him a really valuable choice, especially against Almirante here. We saw Hechi earlier in the tournament today actually opt in for Chosen against a UNSC, and the Chosen just is such a bad we choice mistake. because the snipers and yep. grenades and everything else. So Mike is definitely going to yep. be hounding for that to see what we can do. So on the red side, representing Mexico, we have Almirante playing as Atriox. Gonna see some quick expos. And on the blue side, we have Mike Bisson representing USA playing as Captain Cutter. Once again, Nick, this is what's on the poster for Halo Wars 2. This is the rivalry right here. Captain Cutter versus Atrium. Age old rivalry. Jackrabbit rolling out for Mike immediately, so Jackrabbit's gonna be scooting out across the map. Will we see a potential you know exactly mini base where that's steal? Yeah, that's We know exactly heavy. where that Jackrabbit's going. We've seen this countless times. Exactly that. Almirante going for generator second in this situation. Going to be ex uh, upgrading that extractor the second that he has 300 power, most likely. Generally speaking, when you go for the first power crate, that's exactly what you're trying to do, is get that generator upgraded. Extractor, sorry, that's what I meant to say. Almirante now showing up at Mike's power crate selection as well with a unit, so that way he can steal this instead of going for the mini base seal. But on the flip side, Nicholas, look at this blue rabbit here going to the generator back of Almirante's base. Uh, will be have seen this mini. before. Absolutely. Yep. We saw Admiration do this in the last chance qualifiers as he snuck up through this very easy path and stole the mini base in the back. You never expect a player to go for the one behind your base. You always expect him to go for the one that's more further away from your reach. However, it's yeah. more easily defendable, but guess what? That means that uh, you're still going to get yoinked without even realizing. He Mom. might actually... No, he's actually going to just Supply get the, uh, the power crates on the set here. Three mini bases to zero for mini all Marante. <laughs> 
I will like putting himself in a nice spot, but it is Aatrox, so pet. Exactly. You can I was just, just about go get to say that. Exactly. So oh, you're going to take my minis? Okay, well, I'm going to buy a base. So that way, you know, I'm still going to keep up with you, except tenfold. Now, and my favorite thing to do with Aatrox, as well as I'm playing as him, Mini base is complete. go Fort 1 and 2, do this exact situation where I go generator, um, usually third and fifth instead of second and fifth. But in this situation, Almirante will get tech 2 much more quickly. Get these generators up, get Fort 1 and 2. The second I have Fort 2, I'm going to buy a base and try to fortify and hold up. While producing grunts like hell, suicide grunts from raid camps, and so on and so forth. Almirante is 100% aware the mini base behind his base was stolen as well. So that's going to most likely, as his rally point is sitting there, as you can see, he's going to attack this. Oh, he changes mind. <laughs> he's going to attack that very quickly. Grunt squad coming up for Almirante. Let's slow start here. Yeah, nothing, nothing super eventful. Both no of the players going for generator second, but there's that base I was just talking about right there. Got four two, purchase the base immediately. Oh, and he buys a third. Three. Oh, no. Uh, okay. 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 If both those bases get up, Pat, we could be here for a while. I'm, uh, I'm slightly terrified. <laughs> yeah. This could be interesting. Fort two, picking up two bases immediately. Can we get Devastating. You use one of them maybe as a sacrifice in case Mike gets aggressive, starts pushing up. Meanwhile, the second one's up and running. Maybe a little bit of collateral damage right there. Morante putting himself up in a really, really nice spot for the mid game. Mike's got to get aggressive here. Mike's got to pick up a base of his own. He's got to start competing here, getting some uh, scouts off Our base as well. Is under attack. I don't think he's aware of it. Yeah, I don't think so either. Amrath is gonna have to get aggressive here as I check the view of Mike Beaston. He's not yet in a position to do these. That's okay. Generally speaking, I don't scout expansion until about the four minute mark, 430 as it is. Of course, right here, Amrath is gonna be taking out this mini base with little contest, but of course, in the meantime, that means that uh, Mike is fully aware of where Amrath's army is. So, he can just kind of get ready to get aggressive. As we're going to see here, uh, Mike is actually going to spot that expansion to see that is one. Under attack. Oh, but on the flip side, guess who just went chosen? Alborante now has the Chosen out, which could be a grave mistake, potentially. We'll see. I, might, I don't know what Mike's going to be able to do here to stop three bases. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be tough. He has to scout. He has to have 100% awareness. He's got to kill the base to get I think he's even first. aware. So that's that's the first expansion. You just have to assume, though, that it's, it's Trox. It's he's Trox, got a secondary yeah. base at this point. You don't necessarily think that he's got three bases. You, still have to, you have to know that second base is up. you got to get pushing toward it. And then maybe he'll figure out that that third base is up and around the corner. You know, actually, this, rabbit, actually, this rabbit is hunting. He just sent that rabbit over there. He's going right for it. He, you're just as well, you he's said. He's going to figure out very quickly. He says, wait a second. This is an Atriox. <laughs> he's going to have that base too. So Mike is going to commit to one side. So he's actually going to go for the expansion on the far side because it's much more difficult for Almirante to defend. But on the trade-off, that means that this upgraded base from Almirante is now guaranteed to be complete, fortified, defended, very Leader easily. Point earned. So Mike now is sitting on third point. He saved up his money. Look at his build here. Has enough for ODST drop now as well. Potentially what he needs to do is drop ODSTs on a mini base in the back or the main base in the back. He's actually deciding to get his army all together right here. ODST mines do a great amount of DPS to building. So he can kill this base very quickly, node. and Almirante honestly can't do the much about it. The enemy has captured our power node. Mike Beast. Just on. like we said earlier, he's got that secondary base. Yeah. That's that's part of it. You just you sacrifice one, you keep the other. You've guaranteed yourself a base at the least. Oh, I see some JPBs. JP Bizzles. That's actually oh my, be very I see difficult. quite a bit. You know, you can't micro if you're stunned. That's a that's, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Right now, currently, Mike Beast on, getting aggressive directly on the main. He says, I'm not going to waste any time. Let's get right to it and Sound see what you can do. Marines. That's actually a pretty good play there, considering oh, that Almirante is out of position. He's defending the second oh, base. No. But he at has the same JPB, time, so he's going to push up right to Mike's base. Oh, Mike has Mike's nothing to, to defend, defend this. that. Oh, oh, no, that's actually so... That puts Mike in a very bad spot, especially since Almirante can just Let's keep see. buying Does he have anything bases. to drop? <laughs> Drops the DST already. Turret coming up now, but it's I feel like I'm seeing late. deja vu right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Mike needs to make sure his money is on point in case he needs to start buying bases for these base trades. We're Mike seeing about, is we're about actually, to see here. he should be able to, oh no, Suicide Grunts are now rallying, but Mike is not split. There we go, perfect split in the nick of time. We'll actually only lose two, not even, just one Marine died in that engagement. He only lost one. Oh, having the three raid camps on his expo though means that there's going to be a constant harass of Mike's Suicide Grunts. 
Mike on also his has combat tech marines at the moment too. Nightingale one shot is going to delay it here. The base. Yeah, he's going to stall. Mike also purchased the base on Almirante's side of the map. Mike now he's going to kill Almirante's main. He just killed the main without a contest. units to 55. Suicide runs now. Three Look at what Almirante is defend. doing though. He's going around the base and killing everything around the base. Meanwhile, Mike's just going for the main. He's hitting the main directly. Oh no, the su suicide runs right here could be a problem. Oh, they oh, targeted no, the single unit. Split. Oh, incredible split still going he's, down. He's, he's gonna away dodge the... the me beam at the same time. Suicide runs just happened to connect Mike. Incredible splits keeping so many of his units alive. Will it be 51, enough? 51-49. Oh, two turrets now. He's One of them off. upgrading he as well. It. Yeah, he's got to come back and defend at this point. Mike might be able to save his base here. Oh, oh fantastic oh, drop. They're going to be doing so much damage to those infantry units. Nightingale shows up as well. But here, there's smoke. Just to keep the base alive, Mike now building on that expansion, upgrading it as well, Nicholas. This is going to be a two base to one base game. I don't think that Mike will lose this base as he's rallying back with his raid infantry, Our infantry units so in quickly here. Oh my god. I'm under Nick. attack from ground Nick, we got to be careful. We were saying we saw the best game of Halo Wars 2 ever earlier. <laughs> this is uh, setting itself up for greatness. Uh, <laughs> Mike finding himself in the best scenarios here. Yeah, in much. the best games that we've seen. Uh, can he defend this though? Yeah, he needs some strong units. He's gonna have to be careful for those JPPs. He needs, JPPs needs to start splitting. Oh, needs to start splitting. Oh, Almirante actually used his entire army there. right there to Our split. Base is under attack. The mines from the JPPs will be super obnoxious, but I don't think that'll cut it. CT Marines as well for Almirante. Uh, ODSTs round two. The enemy ODSTs. has captured our oh, no. Suicide no. Grunts now rolling Suicide in Suicide Grunts well. flanking right now. He's got to get some shots on them. Great Combat connections with the Suicide Grunts, specifically on ODSTs. 44. Oh. ODSTs are staying Link alive, though, Nick. Down to 30. Two more Suicide Grunts coming into play here. That might spell it. Suicide Grunts are just walking away! Oh, oh and he... Almirante oh, just commands them into Our two units. He could split neck. those much better. 37 to 20 in favor of Almirante. 37 to 17. Mike in some trouble here. I don't Supply think he can defend this necessarily. But keep in mind that Almirante has no idea about Mike's expansion, and Mike's been sitting on Tech 2 this entire game, now sitting at 1,000 Oh, power. good point. So, he's looking pretty good. Needs to watch his ODSTs, though. Needs to keep spamming mines whenever he gets them back. His ego is fantastic, Nick, so he might just be saving up for the ODST assault group. And wait, that was the resign from Mike, I think. Almirante does win the game yes. and Mike does resign. So okay, I was worried about a disconnect or anything like that. The, cl but... the classic uh, Halo Wars has no idea who actually won the game. <laughs> they say on my screen it said blue was victorious, yeah. so I held my breath there for a second. <laughs> And then it tells you Red Team's Man. victorious. I mean, realistically speaking, I, I'm not sure if Mike should have resigned that quickly there, but it definitely was a lot more tough for him to bounce back, considering that Almirante had a base fully upgraded and running. Also a Tech 2, I mean, and he had two bases, but they were both, like, one of them was unupgraded uh, for the longest. Anybody? No. N okay, okay, okay. So last game we had some disrespect <laughs> with the Serena play, and now Almirante's disrespect playing with Vortis instead. <laughs> <laughs> At one side, did Bosoms and Renzi get black screen? Yeah, the, yeah, they did. They actually did. We are All back. right, no black ladies and for gentlemen, me. let's hope the game doesn't crash again. On the blue side, playing as Captain Cutter, we have Mike Beeston, and on the red side, we do have Mexican player Almirante, oh who only has to win three more games, and then he does take home the Grand Finals Championship position, best player in the world by default in the Halo Wars Championship Vortis League, playing as Vortis, this is going to be a very interesting game. Mike already taking that center. I think Halo Wars 2 is pretty global at this point. We've had players from China, Manny, playing from China. We just saw earlier we had someone from India. We've got Almirante from Mexico complete. here. We had Liam and, and, uh, and Naka from the UK. I mean, game's out there. Every part of the globe Supply is playing Halo Wars 2. Yeah, absolutely. Gotta love it. On the flip side as well, we have Mike Beeston, who's actually two games away from America? winning series number one, Nicholas. He's two games away from a reset in the series. Yep. I'm going to only three games away from winning the tournament. That's right. It's as simple as that. It's, it's as simple as that. <laughs> it doesn't get much more simple. We're seeing... <clears throat> Looks like Almirante actually taking both Supply of Mike's mini bases is going to cause a problem there. We've seen him do this before, specifically against Hetchy when they played against each other in a series, I think uh, two tournaments ago, when Hetchy picked up the center, 
Almirante went and picked up his mini bases on the side, caused a bit of a problem. Supply we saw Mike do this earlier as well. It seems Generator that the person who gets complete. the outside ones typically wins these engagements. And that yeah, could just be from what position. I've seen in a small yeah. sample size. Yeah, it could be a small sample size, but it's so much easier when you produce out of all of those to converge on the center. It just, that's exactly what it does. Meanwhile, gonna take Mike a straight line rally here to really get his units to the center. He might get picked off. Let's see how this one plays out. I think Almirante is in a bit of an advantage, earned. though. Yeah, I, I think it totally depends on the situation simply because Vortis doesn't have suicide grunts. Our Keep that in mind. So attack. without suicide grunts, He's in a very, very tough situation against any infantry balls. Of course, Mike is really good at splitting as it is, so it's difficult for any player to make good suicide connections against Mike. However, I will say that they do so much damage in the right way, but it's it's just it's just unfortunate that uh, Almirante is actually not going to have them at his disposal, but it doesn't mean that he is completely going to lose. So, right now... He's to utilize that goo. Yeah, exactly. Right now, Almirante needs to get Mini onto a base complete. and start applying damage so that way you can use combat skills to take extra money and supply from the enemy player. So all he has to do is just scoot over to mini base, start doing some DPS. The middle one especially is very good, and losing the chopper there is actually pretty tough. And uh, that sniper is actually going to chase down the grenadier as well, so Almirante is missing a complete opportunity to get any money at all. Now pushing the middle mini as well, trying to get more income from this situation. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, good, it's uh, what it is, it essentially Combat Spoils makes it so you do get income from attacking certain buildings, so keep that in mind. Under assault from enemy ground force. Keep. I think able to get a good army here. 42 units to 20. Yeah. Ronte had four different spots to produce units from, and he's down to 20, 18. A little confusing. Yeah. I don't necessarily like the brute play. Yeah, it's 100% not going to work the against Mike. Mike is probably like, especially Fuck. with the snipers there. Nice. Base is under this is easy pickings. What a waste of money this is for Almirante. Raid camp constructed. <clears throat> Chopper hungry for I, blood. I'd imagine that Nathan is Chopper rolling around in his loser's so bracket free. grave. Actually, the group <laughs> play grave. Uh, seeing this Vortis play right here. Generator constructed. I have. Ronte, I don't know what he's doing here. 19 units. Well, he can't really do much. Mike's he just, only got. He's basically just got to get his home. hero out and then try attack. to do something. But he's just got all raid camps. So he's just locked his bases. Mike doing a very good job of spreading his units all around the map. Just going to all kinds of different bases, as many as he can. Leader power ready. Chopper's rolling out as well. Almirante really needs to get some DPS on bases, though. Anything, any building will get him that income that he wants. Grenadier is now dropping on this as well, trying to protect this mini base, but they're really not going to do anything on Tech One, even with the V Star. Almirante trying to spread the goo as best as he can. Will be enough though. Some good Rams going right here. He's actually going to pick that army. Choppers now, shrapnel rounds as well. That's interesting. Don't think I expected that. That's for sure. Choppers, at least on this map, have very quick travel paths, so it's very good for uh, Almirante as long as he doesn't get grenaded. But all it takes is like two grenades and every single chopper's gonna go down. Brutes now showing up as well. JPB's to actually get the slams. Accidentally hits the Y button instead of the ram. He does do the JPB jump. Harvest are constructed. Here come the Marines, actually in the middle of the engagement as well. Also very good burned. that he's picking these units off. Random jumps from these JPBs actually won't do anything for him. Snipers and garrisons as well and say, ooh, goo, uh, goo techs at the same time. Gonna be doing a lot of goo spreading. There it is. For some reason you only see it as the... Uh, under attack. Uh, under one way to put camera. it. Goo techs? One way to put it? The spreading goo spread. The goo. The goo spread. Blanking? Anybody? Okay. Something like that. Yeah. JPB's actually landing on four units, getting a good amount of stun. Rams here, very bad idea, considering that grenades will just kill all of these units, and Almirante very quickly realizes that. Gonna have to back up with his remaining army. If he would have just used those choppers to actually hit uh, buildings, he would be getting a lot more income right now, but he's just sitting on. Uh, not, he's just not in a very good position. Mike Beast on now saving up money as well for the drop for ODSTs. Keep in mind that Mike's only been able to produce Marines out of two locations. That's it. And yet he's got full control here. 60 units to 23. Leader point. I'm going to go ahead and knock on Almirante's front door. He's going to say hello real quick. 
Our base is under attack. What is your command? Flame Pie Man is a UK player, by the way. From the UK. <clears throat> Isn't that right? Something like that. I thought Pie Man was from the UK. <laughs> he is offended. He is not from the UK, apparently. Awkward. So I'm going for the UK's Australia. former colony, Australia. That's Australia. my next guess, sir. Pie Man's from the UK. <laughs> Almirante exactly is using two extractors in this Our situation. Very tough for him, actually. From here, Almirante should just get walked over, in all honesty. Not much Our he can do to respond danger. to this. Did not go for the hero. Gutex once again, but that's not going to do anything except spread the goo. We need power. Build 54 some to 10. If he picks off those next few units, there's absolutely nothing. And again, those Sui Grunts right now would be an exceptional play if he had picked any other Banish other than Yap, of course. We are not uh, producing I power. think they're too valuable to, to even try to go for this. Yeah. I mean, just what are you going to do Want against a good player? Grunts. Mike isn't going to screw up, and Almirante does resign right there. Wow. 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 Mike up. Wow. 3-1? believe yeah. <laughs> oh, it's because right. it is your first paycheck <laughs> it's a pink says. slip you've been eliminated chris <laughs> down chris back up chris down <laughs> okay mike this be stunned going cover on the line almirante going forge now in my opinion forge is the better unsc in my opinion those of you who don't you don't agree that's fine i disagree <sighs> Forge is a better UNSC because even though he doesn't have drops or anything <laughs> fun like that, he's actually the best eco UNSC in the book because of rolling economy. Upgrading all of his pads, getting uh, those benefits is actually really good for him, especially on a giant map like this. Also, having siege units on this map is so crucial to just holding and defending your base, which of course Forge has in his back pocket for 1200 supply. And then he can repop nearly in, what is it, a minute, two minutes, something like that. It's crazy. Supply so pad, as it is, my money is actually on Forge in this situation. So, of course, at the same time on the blue side, Mike Beast on playing his cutter is actually one game away from taking home the first series. He would win 4-1, is that correct, Nick? In the first series. Supply pad upgrade yes. complete. Thus Supply nullifying the fact that he a came four, out, of yeah. the, out of the loser's bracket finals. So, he's no longer a loser, he's a winner at that point. Is what if I'm he wins this, though. So. That's right. Now, on this map, Almirante as you guys still know, only three games away from winning a championship. Yeah, that's right. Almirante just as stole right a mini now. base. As of, as of right now. Stole a second mini base. On this map, it's quicker Generator to steal mini bases than go for your own. And, of course, on the flip side, Mike's going to be stealing one mini base. Sprinting as fast as it's he can. It's a crazy for the thought, isn't one. it? It is. It is. Quicker to go to the other side of the map than to go to your own side of the map. Ash is Mike, a brilliant Mike, Mike, Halo Wars 2 map. <laughs> Absolutely. Mike does Generator buy the second mini base. So right now they are two to two on each side of the map. On this map in particular, most players... Neither of them purchased their own though. Exactly. Back. In this situation, going generator fourth is pretty common. Let's see. Yeah, I think both players did end up doing that. And of course, Almirante having the Roger rolling eco is able troops. to purchase um, both the upgrades for his supply pad and generator very quickly. Going armory fifth though, Nick. So having the speed and uh, I guess you could say travel distance speed that George Hawk upgrade, does have, complete. he could actually do a lot of DPS of these mini bases on his side of the map as well as uh, just harass the opponent as best he can. Mike going for Generator yeah, 5th as well. So Mike's going in for the Quick Tech game. He might not be able to do much against the Forge Hog early on. Barton Jerome's going to be kind of useless on this part of the map. Mm -hmm. I agree. If we do see that coming out from Mike, I don't think Mike's going to put out a Spartan. Let's double check these mini bases before he absolutely contradicts me. As is the caster's curse. No, no, no armory's coming up. <laughs> Probably gonna just see a heavy marine ball here in the center. From Kutsky. <laughs> Mini base complete. Almirante throwing down that uh, second generator. Of course, he's confident that he has enough supply in order to just say, screw it, I'm just gonna keep building uh, with just two eco buildings here. Barracks now going up on his mini on his side of the map. Let's take a look at these two minis. Nothing yet. Supply pads all around on these two just because they're the most Generator vulnerable. Upgrade Both complete. players know that. Generally speaking, when they do mini steals, you just want to throw a supply pad on that. Just that way you get the, the value of the mini base. Maybe more get than your money how back. long it takes. Yeah, exa you know, exactly. Exactly. 
And uh, right now, both players are going Especially for the base. Especially with this map, it's too big. That's right. Nobody's getting to it in time. Guess what? Areas. Big Daddy Forge Hog is now out and Area about and driving complete. around happily. He's going to, like I said, move directly out to the mini base and just apply that pressure. Possibly drop the HP on that bad boy significantly. Okay. Change his mind. He's actually going across the map to deal with power nets. It seems like. Almirante going to get the anvil round in about 30 seconds. Our Definitely don't want to get aggressive He's going to be able to pick off these four Taking marines right here. From enemy infantry. Mm, yeah, he's, he's going to go ahead and engage those four he's marines. He's trying to grab power, actually, with that play. It seemed like Mike doing a great job. Look at this amazing split. Just split all the units five different directions. So try to keep up with me. It's fine. Get ready for Hellbringers and marines like rolling 12 seconds out from getting a secondary base. Yeah, that's actually a, a really big map good like play. this. It's a great play. Yeah. Honestly, Almirante is going to have zero knowledge on that for a long time. It's not something you would expect. You would expect them to pick up the mini, uh, the main base. I think right in front of them. Honestly, that's where I would expect it. But again, I'm not a top player. And it looks like Almirante going to pick up. Just going to scout that base. Thinks that there is no secondary base. Let's see if Almirante is just that aware and just goes and tries to scout this third base. Oh boy, where's it going? Looks like he's going actually to scout this. He could easily spot that second base, Nick. I think yeah, we'll once he, he looks at this, he's going to be like, wait a second. Wait yeah, he just turns a second. Around, though. Mike actually just now getting sure. his Enemy base upgraded as well. Let's take a look. Almirante not even close. He's got about 300 power. Oh, I, I, guess spot. I guess it is far off. Pick two on his Our main. He's got a secondary base up and running. Seeing the Forge Hog was actually Almirante. likely a huge indicator to Mike. Mike says, you know what, I'm just going to go yeah. quick tactic. What are you going to do? I'll just make turrets and you can't you can't deal with me. Supply pad constructed. Seeing a double air pad from Mike on his main base and just supply pads on that secondary base. If Almirante air lets him get lets Mike get into Fly double air, I don't see any stopping that anytime soon, especially considering that Almirante is way behind. He's still twenty seconds out from getting that tech upgrade. And he still doesn't have a secondary base. I don't see any power note control from him as well. Yeah, Almirante is, is actually attack. going to be pushing up and trying to get aggressive, but of course at the Combat same time, since he has complete. units Fort near the garrison, damage, Mike's actually going to be aware that he's pushing here. So he's probably going to throw it on a second push turret. Almirante. Look at that, base is upgraded as well. Almirante is now pushing over that. He could be walking up the front door, Nick. Or maybe he's trying to go... Also for the expansion? I don't know. I don't think he can decide either. The enemy has captured Set his rally point to the mini base. Oh, and now the main. Hornet reported. Over. Second turret now coming up as well for Mike. Turret getting anti imagery on it as well. That Supply means that guess what? Omarante can't push that. But on the flip side, does Mike have anything really to defend? That second Not base? Not necessarily. It's 66 to 28 Omarante's right here. still unaware. He has no idea about that base now. Marines are ready to go. That can actually he's be just a, out of vision in that garrison. Could be a very grave mistake for Almirante. This could be the game right sure, here that he Mike does takes. That's his undoing there. Yeah, exactly. Gonna be able to pick a mini though here for Almirante. So he's just gonna Our walk up here, get the hell ring. He's talked about before. Mike doesn't necessarily have an army to defend here. He's got 33 units, 300, and 500 for his eco. Almirante nearly got full combat popular with a decent combat eco. Mechanic. Yeah, combat tech does not engage this. He probably, you know, I don't think he can do anything against those anti-infantry uh, turrets without those, some Gale support. Yeah, those anti-infantry turrets. Oh, you're gonna, oh, you're gonna do a casual stroll on the sidewalk? Because I'm just gonna shred you. And now Almirante is actually deciding to push this. Oh, Honestly, Mike probably this has a significant. Trouble for him. He has probably a significant air oh, army here. Oh, Mike's sitting on a thousand resources right now. What is he saving up for? Ooh, That's ODST the right with the combo the there! Oh my oh, god, every single unit made. just died! <laughs> Mike's splitting units. Exactly what he was waiting for. <laughs> He's like, push me please. <laughs> now 42-38. Almirante. Almirante's gotta run. He doesn't even have wolves coming out. He went combat tech marines, so he's deciding to just Marines, stick with marines at the moment. He needs to have some sort of air defense. Does he even know? He has no idea that Mike has that second basic. Kodiak's now setting up as well for the siege play. That's going to be a nuisance, but honestly, guess what? Hornets can just fly over those bad boys. Nine gills can smoke yeah. them. Who cares? Oh, Not going to be really effective right now. 
Almirante now. now that Kodiak is just out of range, one. though. Yeah. Just out of range. Marines reporting. He has no clue, Nick. He has not scouted that. No. Siege I'm turns telling you, he saw, the, he saw the, really the, where the secondary base normally goes, and he said, I guess he just doesn't have a secondary, but you have to, have to, have to check everything. Yeah, 100%, because he still has no idea. He has no world. secondary himself here. Eight minutes in the game, Supply no secondary base. That's troublesome. Absolutely agree. Barracks I guess in his mind, he thinks it, it's a one-to-one -all, one -one on bases right now. So I guess maybe he doesn't feel Can the need. Oh that boy, that Spartan might have given it away. <laughs> that Spartan. Kodiak is shooting. Yep. There go the Marines. Are the Marines they going are... right for it? Oh. Looks like oh. they're lining it straight. He's like, wait a that, second. <laughs> that Spartan gave it away. He's about to learn the terrible <laughs> truth. He's had a secondary base this whole time. Oh, Spartan already getting weak from the combat tech Marines. What are, what's going to happen? The Gales have to come over to support, but the Gales are going to get picked. If not careful, Hornet's actually target firing that Forge Hog. Anti infantry turrets on the Expo as well for Mike. Micro. Kudiak's getting a little bit closer, though. I'm actually so surprised that Mike doesn't either. have more Hornets in this situation. He's 69 out of 80. Well, Amarante's sitting full pop. Wolverine here. has a base going, upgrading supply pads, has supply Wolverines now to support. Honestly, with these Kodiaks in the front door here, this could be very bad for Mike. I'm getting slightly worried. I think Mike will be fine here. He's got two attack. turrets. I think he's getting that second one up. He's got anti-infantry on that one. 70 right now for Mike, 77 for Almirante. Let's see if home base advantage plays out here. A oh, great stomp. He's actually going to steal that wolf. Both Wolverines are now really stunned. Which doesn't do anything. Just hijacked it, I believe, which is it's okay. the one thing he didn't want to hijack. He's got no air. <laughs> so that Wolverine is useless. I guess one less thing that he has to worry about. But you really don't need to be attacking to this right now, Mike. Mike should get out of here with the Hornets and just go get aggressive if possible. Constant wolf support is actually going to be really bad for Mike. Mike needs to tech swap into something We're else ready. here. He's dealing with wolves, but not very well. Kodiak did get out of there alive as well. For Hetch. That's or Mike Hetch best on a... I did it now. Almirante. Almirante. These guys maybe, are really annoying. maybe Mike needs a siege turret on his main. It would put a lot of pressure onto that Kodiak. To a lot of these infantry units right here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm surprised we're not seeing a siege turret for Mike sitting at now. Oh, he's dropping in another ODS siege oh. turret, doing the combo oh, again. Almirante says, before. "I'm gonna do that too." Then, <laughs> incredible. All of these Wolverines are actually pretty weak. The two of them that he's got, Spartan Slam. No, no, no. He canceled it in the middle the of the attack. You have to focus fire those oh, wolves. No. You have to focus fire those wolves. Wolves are gonna shred those units, but of course, guess what? Spartan laser a lot of one shots could do though. pretty well here. Yeah, he's getting his target firing those Wolverines now. Oh, game, don't freeze on me again. We're good. Our allies are in trouble. Gonna have to back up. A little bit of a tremble there. Yeah, <laughs> it wavered <laughs> as my heartbeat did as well. <laughs> Hornet reporting. Now Mike's sitting on two air pads. He's like, what do I do with them? I don't know what to do at this point. Leader point earned. Right now, Almirante sitting at 72 out of 80 pop, Nick. We're under fire over here. Honestly, Almirante just needs to get aggressive. He can't Sorry, handle upgraded. enough anti infantry turrets. Just having two right just there with supporting commit. army. That Spartan can get a very nice ground pound right now. I think he's setting up to do attack. that. I think he's about now. to do it. Grizzly no Battalion, care. potentially? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got, I got excited. No turrets on that Pelican. Oh, uh, that's actually a poor drop right there. All he has to do is just hijack one of those Kodiak. Oh, he's not going to, though, at the moment. Spartan's uh, shield is now halfway. Those Kodiaks are just shelling. Turret constructed. Needs to back up in this situation. Mike only got 40 units, Pat. 68 to 40. Like you get one game away from resetting this series. Yeah, Wolverines can just see the Hornets from up top there. Mike is now sitting in a thousand to play. Mike just be saving up for ODST assault at this Kodiak. point. Cyclops here. I honestly think he is. Kodiak is officially Takes taken the by the Spartan. Spartan at least is going to cause infantry. the pick here for Almirante. Almirante is going to have to kill his own Kodiak. Supporting Spartan army here. Is low on health. Where Be is he? Careful. Where's the Spartan? Spartan dies because that Kodiak went down. That's actually so unfortunate. Now having dispersion nozzle right, flamers as well for Mike. He's going to be able to continually hold this off. This is such a hard attack here for Almirante to keep up with. Under attack. 
Two anti infantry turrets here. Oh, the Grizzly Battalion dropped it. That's actually so unfortunate. Mike. That's going to be a problem. Is going to have to resign. There you go. Three to two. Game five. Oh, man. Almirante taking the W. Relentlessly. Get the spoil. Thank you. <laughs> Mike has to focus here. Yes, He's he one does. game away from resetting the series. Almirante only series is right now three two in favor of Mike. Almirante two games away from winning the entire event. And like I said before, Pat, my prediction was four two series one for yes. Mike Easton. Nick, this right could now, it potentially... set itself up perfectly. <laughs> Almirante just has to win this game to tie it up, and then after that, he's won the championship. Mike Beast on here playing his cutter in the blue side, opting for the Marine start. Let's see if Almirante decides to opt for Rabbit. Yes, he does. Playing his Forge on the red, of course. And he's going to be grabbing his Power Crates doing basic stuff. This Jackrabbit could steal a mini and be very aggressive. Just kind of annoy the absolute hell out of Mike. Mike, I feel personally, is at a leader disadvantage here. I honestly feel that uh, Forge is just a better leader. So if he would opt into something else... Um, I think he could do fairly significant. I'm not sure any of the banished, man. Any of the banished are really good against Forge as well. Except for a voice. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and disagree. I feel like Revan Deja Vu here. I think Cutter's a better leader. Just needs to surround that Forge Hog and take it out rather quickly. Just don't don't let it get into the Tier 2 with a Veteran C Forge Hog. That's all I'm saying. Mike needs to win this game early on. Needs to get back to the aggressive attacks. He's been playing kind of complacent. He's not necessarily been putting pressure on in the early part of the game, Pat. Supply I think that's really been a problem for him. Yeah, I been actually... playing kind of a complacent, playing a little bit back game. Yeah, Almirante does Our get another mini steal, attack. and actually Almirante... Speaking oh. of it, Almirante is <laughs> getting all four. This Mike is actually, what I'm talking about. Mike Ooh, actually was Mike able to it. buy it. Great yeah, cut. so he had a Marine just we sitting there. Very luckily, in the nick of time, he does officially grab it. And generator now going saying, down Pat. for Mike? Just, seems like he's playing complacent. Why? You're Mike Beast on. You're Mike Beast, Beast on, man. Just get, get a it's little okay. aggressive. It's okay. Here. He just has to win one game, Nick. Just one game. Almirante having three mini bases on Rift is very, very beneficial for him. There's not much that Mike can do at a certain point in the game, considering production-wise, you need Marines as cutter to win. Having only two units just is very obnoxious, or two production places for Marines makes it very Supply difficult. Pad constructed. Yeah, Almirante doing a fantastic job. He's aware that Cutter is going to go infantry. It's the same old play over and over again. So what is he going to do? He's going to make it so that Mike can only pump out of two spots. Everyone in the chat cut down a cutter just immediately. They're just they're just giving him some energy, man. People in the chat saying, "Mike, don't give up, man. You got this. You got this." He's played something like 15 games in a row now, nonstop. This is this is a USA hard versus spot. Mexico right here. This is <laughs> absolutely the old Classico. <laughs> Ye old I, see, I see cars going for the USA chance in the old chat. Let's see if Mike can pull it off. Almirante playing phenomenal here. Pretty much the entire tournament. Under yeah. That's why he's only two games away from under winning this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Beaston now continually producing Marines, also getting some Hellbringers out of his base or his, uh, his uh, barracks as well. Complete. Going to be taking out the mini base as quickly as possi possible for Almirante. Almirante having a second gen already upgraded. Going once again for Forge Hog ASAP. Forge Hog, very difficult in a UNSC matchup to deal with simply because snipers are the main protagonist for your side if you're trying to fight against hero units. And guess what? Forge is a vehicle. So snipers won't do anything to him. Now notice it. Almi does get a scout on the back minibase for Mike. And we've seen this before. Mike likes putting his advanced generators on a back minibase. Like I've said before, complete. not my thing. A little bit too risky for myself. <laughs> uh, we'll see if Almirante <laughs> actually puts pressure on that. Because if you want to cut his eco down, that's, that's how you do the it. way to do it. <laughs> Get rid of that advanced generator. What a waste that would be. We'll see if he does anything useful with that scout, though. It could be. Could potentially be everyone in the chat memeing away at Highway. You can't possibly actually enjoy Highway. <laughs> uh, highway, the worst map in Halo Wars history. <laughs> like, ever. Uh, how about we bring back some Halo Wars 1 maps? Let's just say that. In a 1v1? Ready to serve. Halo Wars 2 has some lackluster maps, but it doesn't matter, because these guys are playing them perfectly. Mike getting control of his side again. Getting a raid camp going here. Oh, I'm sorry, a barracks. <laughs> a raid camp. 
He views banished things might be different, but he just wants to play UNSC. Banished are really good. Everyone wants to play UNSC. Yeah. I think we see a colony play at him like at some point here. Perhaps not the right map selection for for a colony play that he's comfortable with. We've seen him on Frontier do that, but I don't think we've seen him on Rift. Nah. Grenade throw researched. But here nonetheless, the, uh, 60 uh, units to 51 in favor of Mike. Absolutely. A thousand power. We're gonna see a tech right there. Like at 4:30. It's actually really good timing as well for Mike. I'm um, really curious to see. Yeah, Almirante's behind in that. So here comes the push. He's gonna know that Mike does not have a second base. Forge Hog is actually easy to kill with enough Marines with grenades. So Almirante's just gonna try to keep harassing and shooting from afar. Here comes the first big engagement. This is why I love Rift so much because it actually forces players to attack each other. Here comes some nades. Almirante stacked up way too much. Well, Mike is actually fairly spread here. All these grenades will connect. Uh, Mike? Yeah, Mike taking control right Looking really good right now. 48 to 30. Oh, oh scatter bomb! Oh, gotta boy. leave, gotta leave, gotta leave, gotta leave! Quick <laughs> move. Just double clicks the Marines and pulls them back in the nick of time. Some Hellbringers in the mix still applying that DPS, but at the same time, ODSTs were dropped. All of them dropped their minds as well. Timing on this for Mike is fantastic. Mike now this is exactly what Mike wants, because now he's going to be able to do the air pad into the armory, get the upgrades on the supply pads, get combat tech as he is right now, halfway done, get some gales in the mix, and then play his infantry game. That's exactly what he wants. As long as Almirante doesn't buy a second base here in the next few minutes, then Mike has a very good chance of getting aggressive here and applying the winning pressure, you could call it. We get some anti-air support ASA. Combat mechanics research. What he does here, 33 to 52, needs to put a little bit of pressure on. Yeah. Combat Tech Marines now against that Forge Hog before he's upgraded are going to be very good. Almirante now three quarters of the way done with his Tech 2 upgrade. Mike just going to keep throwing the ODST mines randomly. Yeah, that's a cheeky little mine. Supply pad constructed. If you got him, might as well use him. Mike needs to buy that second base before Almirante does, in my opinion. While producing Marines, it's very, very doable. Mike does spend all of his money on something. Almirante doing a good job just uh, taking power nodes and defending his own in this situation. Of course, a long ways off of combat tech. Throw, I say that, and he's uh, three quarters of the way done. <laughs> he's almost got combat Slide tech. Going to be a very point. even situation uh, unit Armory wise. Constructed. 51 to 65 for Mike Beast on in the oh lead boy. there. Mine's Mike actually catching some of these units. His base open. That, that mine just he's got a clear push to, to Almirante's, or I'm sorry, to Mike's main. Under fire from ground troops. You've seen this before. Oh, the base trades, man. The base yeah. trades. I'm having flashbacks right now. Will Marines Mike support? To get his next point, though, right before all me. Everyone's sending positive vibes to Mike right now. Catching a couple Marines off guard, gonna start getting a little bit of a more Mike beneficial here. situation Show for himself, taking out some of these units, just kind of crawling ahead. Now 20, uh, 23, 24 supply ahead. Of Almirante. Almirante is now rallying his units towards Mike's front door. Mike now sitting at 300 supply though. Will he opt for turrets to defend Cyclops, this? He doesn't have any turrets. This Spartan is about to figure pack. out what's going on here, friend. What is the point for Mike to push that, point that mini and leave his main open? He's actually going to pull back now. Hornets now coming out as well. The combat tech marines are going to just shred that poor little guy as he's flapping his way out of the nest. Will go down. I'm under fire from ground crew. Needs more gills. Research. Hijack research for the Spartan will give him a bit more HP, but he definitely needs to piece out of the situation. All of these units here for Almirante are underneath a gale as well. Forge Hog is just going to hunt down above. the Spartan. Spartan gets the slam for the stun just to prolong his life by a few seconds, but man, that Forge Hog is going to come back and just chase him down. One more shot, and that Spartan will fall. Oh, <laughs> that's so devastating, actually. At the Our same time, Kodiak Siege are now shredding Mike's main base from afar, making this attack so much more favorable for Almirante. ODST is dropping in now. Scatterbomb does drop as well. Mike splitting his army almost perfectly, but throwing most of it into Almirante's stacked up units. Anvil round goes down on most of the army. ODSTs are hunting Kodiak specifically in this situation. No turrets for Mike, but the drop is going to do a lot of damage oh, to these what units. A drop Forge Hog is that. also weak in the same situation. Kodiaks are still alive enough to keep shredding these units, though. So Almirante still shredding these units from Mike with those Kodiaks. They are not close enough to prevent the DPS. And Mike. 
21 army population 18 to 50 is forced like, to resign resigns it's going the distance <laughs> three to three this is it Marante, man. one game oh. away from winning the tournament mike one game away from resetting the series oh my god mike goes colony yeah absolutely <laughs> i'm very excited for this this is what i think the most important match in the entirety of the HWCL thus far. Almirante playing as here Decimus here on the red side. On the blue side, we do have Mike Beaston running Colony. Now, Nick, I want to talk about something, okay? Decimus is known as the hero killer. Having things in his arsenal. Warlord, Extractor hammer pull. Required. Warlord stun with the Y button, okay? Vortex. Grunt Mines. That combination Arthur, is so, so terrifying to deal with as any player using a hero because you can guarantee nearly a kill if you get a good enough surround with a vortex combo with the hammer pull whatever you've got you generally speaking are looking so good that you're just going to take that so i want to see what that, that happens decimus has the advantage i would say personally that desi actually has a slight advantage on colony i have played a lot of colonies on frontier and i will tell you that i generally speaking do win as Desi in that combination right there. So let's see what happens here. Both players grabbing the middle minis, making sure that they establish their eco very early on. Very st uh, stereotypical play for Frontier. Mike already Harvester getting ready to go purchase his second mini as well. I think uh, Almirante just knowing Mike. You've seen Mike play Frontier so many times. It was like just a given that that was going to happen, you know? Squidward in chat saying we need a winner right now, this game, it's been nine hours. Yes, it has been nine hours. Uh, I don't want to see it end. Let's see. 14 games, Mike picking up the mini base behind his, making sure that there's no cheeky plays going on here. <laughs> Buddha 307 in the chat saying, in I called out of work for this. <laughs> I respect I that. love you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right, I love you. Emotionally, you Appreciate and I are you. connected. <laughs> War Council for Mike as well after. is producing the Hunter Captain, so exactly that. Nothing strange here. This is the plays that, or this is the play that we've Any seen him do complete. all day for Great ten hours of gaming. <laughs> I think it's been ten. I, I think the tournament started at eleven, didn't it? It's, it started uh, at eleven. So yep. Oh. Approaching at nine right now. If Almirante wins minutes. this game, he will be crowned Halo Wars Championship League Season 1 Champion. And if Mike loses this, or Mike wins this, sorry, he will actually progress this into a second best of seven series. Probably the craziest. Nick, this is what happened with like the H or HCS, didn't it? <laughs> Some of the top teams yes. getting into a best of seven, having to replay that as well. Oh. It's mentally draining. Let's do this, and they do it for an entire weekend. This is all that's spread out through an entire weekend for them. This is one day. Yeah. Uh, by the way, under Captain out, Mike's got to get aggressive with that. It looks like Almirante's Warlord is about 20 seconds out, and it's put towards the back of the map right now. So there's no way he's Mike's going to be able to stop that, but he needs to go ahead and start and some map presence right here while that Warlord is coming out. Break camp up for Almirante in the center as well, so we'll keep an eye on that. And see if any suicide guns start coming out for that. Uh, ooh, a lot of a lot of grunts in the center as well. Yeah, absolutely. Hunter Captain is now getting aggressive. Skitters are being attached. Suicide grunts being lined up here as well for Mike Beaston. Taking power nodes is a good option here. You want to make sure that you do get at least two of those power nodes as you progress. If you take the middle, then you're looking great. Warlord now rolling out for Almirante. Hammer stun, or sorry, hammer pull is halfway done. Harvester. I think this first engagement these suicide runs can make a is going to decide the series, man. Great, great ram. Oh, boy. Suicide runs doing a very good job. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right the Warlord is hunting. No. Warlord is hunting. Keep in mind that you can't... That Warlord's super weak, though. You man. can't hammer pull. Hunter Captain Vortex goes down. The taunt goes down as well. Suicide, suicide runs clip. connecting. Guess what? The Hunter Captain still has shields. Nick, he is looking fantastic in this engagement. Suicide Grunt's now connecting with it as well for Almirante. Almirante is definitely down here. And Arby gets ran by the Goliath. Oh, Man, that, <laughs> that Warlord is getting stuck. Oh, no. It looks like Mike just needs one or two more Suicide Grunts. Warlord, no. Warlord is still alive at the Warlord moment. Warlord is... Finally picked down. Oh. What an incredible engagement. Almirante made an incredible error. You can't hammer pull the 
Hunter Captain as Warlord. It's like it gets picked before it makes contact with anything. The Skidwars are doing a fantastic job here. Eight units for Almirante to 28 for Mike Bison right now. Mike, it's now or never. You've got to get aggressive here. No units He's left about for to have A Goliath drop. 30 to 0. He's got to get aggressive, Pat. He has leader point. Goliath drop right now. It's a leader point. He just picked it up. He's got to go. This is it. To force the second series. He's got to push this base right now. 32 units to 0. <laughs> Almirante oh, just trying to put up defenses right now. He's going towards. He's like, what can Pat. I do? We can see the oh, we can see it right no. here. The hunter has to pushing. Oh, 38 no. units to zero. Mike has a Goliath drop in the back pocket, I believe, as well. Warlord comes out Warlord again, down. getting stunned immediately by the hunter Warlord. captain. We're gonna see that Goliath drop in just a second here. Oh. Like probably just waiting for the money here. 38 oh, units to zero. Attack. We'll hunter captain target warlord. firing the warlord warlord only the warlord can't pull the hunter captain you, you just can't you can't do anything about it almirante's grunt army is out of position for that first engagement nick i can't believe it wouldn't you agree that the skitters are a nice counter to to the warlord right there they're doing a lot of dps absolutely if almirante would have had a the skitters can still shoot oh. This is it. Warlord about to drop. To Warlord down. Enemy. Vortex. Oh, it's a glassing beam. It's the mean beam. Oh, but Mike. With incredible just... splits. Not worried about it. Almirante six is forced to resign. Oh my god, we're going into. Four to three. <laughs> oh it's a my god. Hosty, get ready Why? on the bands. Hosty, get ready on the bands. It's reset. Oh. If you enjoy Breaking the Clutch content and want to get more involved, join our Discord server to find teammates, community, and the ability to chat with us directly. Furthermore, follow us on Twitch to join the experience live, where we play our favorite Halo games and hang out with our audience multiple times a week. You'll find the links to both of these in the description of the video down below. Thank you for participating in our community, and enjoy the video.